Hello, one welcome to a word from the Lord. Uh, James over here with you. We have Mark McMinnis uh, with us tonight. It's been a good while since you've been on together, Mark. It's been a good while since you've been on TV, and uh, I know the viewers, some viewers, have been calling and asking where Mark is. Mark's still around. Mark preached last night on the tent, and uh, we're doing TV tonight. We're got the tent going full swing. I guess we're winding up uh, the first week. I guess almost well, the first uh, three or four days. And so, if you haven't Going out to the tent uh, in Brosville, you're uh, yeah. missing out, and you don't have, uh, you haven't missed too much, but you need to uh, get on out there. This is a kind of a, um, I don't know if you can see that or not. This is uh, Brosville. This is um, Whispering Pines Road right here. This is Calvin's Flea Market, X Monster Spot. That's where the tent is. So if you're going to Danville, going this way to Danville, it'll be on your left. If you're going that way, it'll be on your right on the north side of the road. Uh, Calvin Flea Markets, where the tent set up, you you can't miss it. Uh, and so we hope you come out and and uh, study God's word with us every night, uh, seven o'clock. No collections. We never never take up any money. Uh, we put a lot of money into them and a lot of time effort, and effort, time and effort. Uh, yeah. How many how many flyers have we not? I believe Mike think? said this morning it was close to three thousand. I think so. Okay. Far. In that, that area. And so we've been camping in the area, talking about rural areas as well as in Danville. And I think right. some folks have even uh, been going into Laurel Park. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, uh, those of you in Martinsville and Danville, <coughs> uh, come out and visit with us. It's not that far. You get on 58, and I think a lot of places it's 60 miles an hour. So you can zip on through there, uh, through there and, and uh, get, with, and get uh, uh, to be with us. And so we hope that you'll do that. Tonight... Uh, what, we're, what Mark and I are going to be doing, we're going to be discussing some things pertaining to the tent. Uh, we're talking about individuals <clears throat> that uh, we think are not very good representatives of supposedly Christianity, Christianity. right? And uh, one of the things that we do at a tent is we uh, allow people to ask us questions. Now, Mark, I, I, I know you came out of... of out of a denomination, Baptist Church, and maybe some others. And, I mean, have you ever really seen uh, the floor being opened up and questions invited like? Well, you know, I've never did really pay that much attention to it when I was there because I guess I was duped, as we saw in the lesson, into thinking that, you know, he's the preacher. He knows everything, and so you're not supposed to question him. Right. And I think that's something that these so-called denominations impress upon people. You know, you're not supposed to question whatever the preacher says, but that's not what the Bible says. You know, First John 4, 1 says, try the spirits exactly. to see whether they are of God because many false prophets are going out of the world. Right. And so we are to try the spirits. Well, it, so it is unusual. Uh, well, what, so what we're doing, we, we actually have, uh, while we're out door knocking, a lot of times we will come across a preacher or or maybe one of their members, and then we go find the preacher. Uh, and we're simply asking the question, is your pastor, and I put that in quotes because we know that they don't use the term pastor like the Bible says, but is your pastor like Jesus? Now, like Mark said, uh, the preachers are the ones that are supposed to know. And that's one thing I try to ask people when we're door knocking, you know, invite your preacher out. Yep, I do too. Because if uh, we have question and answer session every night, uh, people can ask questions, and if anybody should know about the Bible, it ought to be the preachers. Yeah, and James, I don't know how many people that we've door knocked in the community, and they'll tell me something, you know, like the lady I talked to yesterday, and I think we're going to be addressing that tonight. But she said, I know that I'm saved, and I was saved before baptism. And so I asked her, you know, where do we see anybody in the scriptures after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ that were saved before baptism? And she said, well, why don't you go talk to my preacher? And that's what they're always saying. Why don't you go talk to my preacher? He'll answer you. Right. He, he or she will answer you. He knows the Bible. I talked to several today. You know, uh, Bob Yeaman, the guy told me today, Bob Yeaman preaches right out of the Bible, but he's in a Baptist church. And so I asked him, where is the Baptist church in the Bible? Oh, and then they started saying, well, the church doesn't matter. The name yeah. doesn't matter. Now, you know, I don't know whether to get into that tonight or not, but that's the way it goes with these so called right. denominations, they, they hold their preacher up on a high pedestal. Right. But we're going to show tonight. Yeah. 
really uh, what really what yeah, they're like. Exactly. And so let's just start off with this. When we said, is your preacher like Jesus? First of all, let's look at Jesus. Friends, Jesus welcomed questions. You know, I just, um, I'm amazed at how many people uh, think that their preachers like Jesus or even like they, that they're like Jesus. But then when you start really looking at Jesus and what he was like, you know, they think Jesus is all about love and hugs and kisses and kittens and rainbows. And, and really when you're looking at Jesus, Jesus invited people to question him. I mean, he, he opened himself up. Now, he didn't just say, you know, does anybody have a question? That's not recorded in the Bible. But when he's teaching, there are people always asking him questions. I'm talking about hardball questions. Trip him up, trying to trip him up and, and, and uh, test him. And, uh, but look what G uh, the Bible says. We're going to look at Luke Luke uh, 2 and verse 46. The Bible says, And it came to pass that after... So I, don't, I need to... I need to enlarge that just a tad so I can read it. Uh, all right. Uh, it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple. Can you read that, Mark? Uh, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. If you move it up a little bit. All right. Oops. Here you go. And asking questions, verse 47. That's right. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So here's young Jesus uh, asking questions as well as uh, yeah, questions. answering questions. And, you know, these people are anything like, they're not even like baby Jesus, much less uh, <laughs> full-grown Jesus, you know. You can't ask them a question. And they certainly won't give you an answer. So we're saying, is your preacher like Jesus? Now, uh, and we could go on and list some uh, accounts where people were asking Jesus questions, trying to trip him up. But let's just get right into it, because we have some video or some audio, uh, as the case may be, of uh, individuals that are not like Jesus. Now, the first one we're going we're gonna to talk about is Mr. Jeff Woods, Welcome Baptist Church there in Brosville. Now, Mark, you want to set up the, the scenario for now, what you, we're going to be you talking about? They're not like Jesus. If, if the audience will listen closely, you can hear in their arguments or in their uh, statements that they're not like Jesus. Just if you listen close enough to what they say. Right. <clears throat> I'm having to. But um, this is Jeff uh, Woods and... He preaches at Welcome Baptist Church right there in the Broswell community. And this was yesterday, I believe it was, after we got through door knocking because, you know, several people said, well, the lady said that I was talking about said that uh, she was saved without baptism. And so I asked her to give me the example. And so we had been going around to, well, we talked to her preacher, which we'll get on, on him to Daniel Custer at uh, Riverview Baptist Church. And uh, so we stopped at Welcome. We saw uh, Jeff's wife sitting on the porch, and we thought maybe he could give us a scripture. And so this is the audio of that. Actually, I, got, I think this is going to be video. Okay. Of... And I'm not sure how... Okay. We're waiting on him to come out. His wife was very cordial, and uh, we asked her if Mr. <laughs> Yes, sir. Hey, Mr. Woods. Hey, Mark. This is K. Woods. Hi. Yeah, we're Thank with you. the Church of Christ. We're going to put on this uh, gospel tent meeting up around here, Broadway. And we've been doing a lot of door knocking in the area. And uh, we've run across some members of the Baptist Church that 
She said that she was assured that she was saved without that word. And I asked her, and she doesn't go here, but she goes to another one who's broken down. And I asked her, could she give us one scripture that in, where anyone was saved after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, where anyone was saved without baptism? And uh, she actually couldn't herself. But I wonder, you know, we, we get that all the time from, from members of the Baptist church, and they tell us to go talk to their preacher. And so that's why we thought we'd stop in and see if, you know, you, you could weigh in on that. Well, I could, but I'm not sure I'm going to All right, stop right there for a minute. The, tell them the question again, a lot of traffic there. What's, well, the, what's the question that was asked? the question. The lady said that she was saved without baptism or before baptism. After the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, I said, is there any example of that in the Bible of someone that was saved before being baptized? Okay. And so I said, can you give us the example? Because all these people that we're talking to, they, they say their preacher can give them the answer. And so we're talking to a preacher, Mr. Jeff Woods at Welcome Baptist Church, and he says, I could, but I'm not going to I'm not going to because I know he's got that phone on. Caleb had his camera out. We never hide it. We got it right out front. Now, here's a question I have. Matthew 28, 18 and 19, Jesus told his apostles to go into all the world, preach the gospel to Everyone, Jew and Gentile, everyone. Matthew, uh, I mean Mark 16, 15 and 16, going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, do you think they were afraid of a camera, James? <laughs> no. <laughs> the apostles, would they, would they shy away from the camera? Here Jesus commanded them to go and preach to all the world, and I appreciate what Brother Johnny said under the tent tonight. If you want to record our lessons under the tent, thank you. If you want to bring a camera, we'll give you a tripod. <laughs> thank you. Know, you. Like yes, sir. Set we up, want, we'll give you something to prop it up on we so want you it get a good broadcast. So good. doesn't that say something about the Baptist preachers? They don't want their lessons video. They don't want what right. they teach to get out in the public. So doesn't that tell you they got something to hide? Now, I, I want to uh, put this up, Mark. This is, you know, a, a thought that I had on this point. I could, but I won't. You know, I could, but I won't. In Matthew 20, 21, 23, now, the reason I'm saying, Mark, this guy, somebody might say, well, you know, Mr. Woods is like Jesus because Jesus didn't always answer a question. I mean, okay. let's look at this, Matthew 21, verse 23, uh, and it came to pass, uh, and when he was, and he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people asked him, uh, came to him asking, and my eyesight must really be getting bad here. That, like. All right, go ahead. Uh, when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority dost thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, and likewise will I tell you by what authority I do these things. All right, so Jesus, you know, if someone says, well, I mean, what would you say that, Mark? So, well, yeah. I'm not going to answer your question. Well, can I ask you a question? Okay. Okay. To, uh, I know uh, 1 Peter 3.15, it says to sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason to hope that's in you with meekness and fear. And so, so we wouldn't shy away from a question. Right. Mr. Jeff could have asked us anything. Yeah, if he'd have said, well, I'll ask you, let me ask you a question first. Okay. Fire right away. Let Fire away, you know. Amen. And so any question, and really, I, you know, I'd say any question that, some, that I ask of someone, like where do you find your church in the Bible or what did you do to be saved or can you give me a Bible authority for whatever, you can turn around and ask me that same question. Yeah. I mean, that's only fair, really. If I ask you a question, you know, I'm asking a favor, so you ought to be able to ask me that same question back. So and you know, that's exactly what they were asking Christ here. Where do you get this authority? Yeah. Okay. And so if someone wants to ask us a question about authority, hey, you know, more power to you. I'd appreciate you asking that. I'd be glad to tell it. So, but so he says he could, but he won't. Now, uh, let's, keep, let's continue on with, with uh, the conversation with Mr. Jeff Woods of Welcome Baptist Church. Because he says some other things that are pretty interesting. Uh, uh, I'm a Baptist faith 
Right there. Whoa, what now? Yeah, what did he say? I'm of the Baptist faith and you're of the Christian faith. Well, again, everybody we talk to, they claim that Baptists are Christian. Right. Right. Let's now, listen. That's rare there. So he recognizes we're of two different faiths. But what does the Bible say? Well, the Bible says, let's look at um, uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Talk about that. Ephesians 4 and verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Well, y'all are of the Christian faith. I'm of the Baptist faith. Well, I also read Acts chapter 11, verse 26. The disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Where were they called Baptists? Yeah, never. Never? Never called Baptists. So, uh, heard a fellow say, I don't know if it's Ralph Laws or somebody, Martinville said, well, you know, Church of Christ is only found one or two times in the Bible. Isn't that enough? <laughs> well, that's one or two more than, than the Baptist church is. So, uh, but when, when, some, when I hear a preacher say, I'm a Baptist faith. Now, can you imagine Jesus ever saying, I am of a Pharisee faith or a Sadducee faith? Well, what did Paul say about that in 1 Corinthians 1.10? Yeah, he said, I, is Christ divided? Yeah. You know, I'm not, don't, don't call yourself after Paul or, or Peter or, or Cephas or Apollos. That's exactly uh, what they were doing, dividing up into different sects. Right. Calling so, them after some man's name. So Pauline faith or Peter faith or whatever. So, see, friends, this is what we're trying to get you to realize. The, the preacher that you put up on a pedestal, when, when he's questioned, and you think he can answer questions, but when he is questioned, he's going to say stuff that's just so far out wild contrary to the Bible it's not it's really sad it is. you know but it tells you the truth you get, you get to see exactly how knowledgeable they are I am a Baptist faith and you're of Christian faith thank you very much yep. you know for clarifying that Amen. so now I think Mark the next thing that he says is just as uh, I don't know got, got a wild factor here mm -hmm. now listen to what he says he said he says, I'm a Baptist faith and you're a Christian faith. Faith, and I understand y'all, what y'all believe in all that. I don't come up first trying to uh, be a hindrance to y'all. Let me ask you this. I'm not going to do that. All right. Now, he said, he said, I'm not coming up there and try to be a hindrance to y'all. Mm. Now, friends, think about that. He's a Baptist faith. So, Baptist faith, he's not going to bring his Baptist faith. Because it would cause a hindrance. Cause a hindrance. That's said a mouthful right there, didn't it? No, see, I mean, he said it. Yeah. People always tell us all the time, well, y'all just bad mouth that. Man, you can't make this stuff up. You know, here is the Baptist faith hindrance. Now, 1 Corinthians 14, 33 says, God is not the author of confusion. But if he brings his Baptist doctrine up there, that's going to cause confusion. Right. It's going to be a hindrance. That's right. Let's look at Galatians 5 and verse 7 is, is what came to my mind. Galatians 5, verse 7 Paul says, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Well, that Baptist preacher came up to the tent. <laughs> Baptist preacher come in and hindered the truth. And so Baptist preachers come in with the bap teaching of Baptist faith, which is not the faith, and all they're doing is hindering. Teaching the doctrine that even the Methodists won't allow. Right. I, I don't know whether you got that clip or not, but I had a guy in, uh, in Danville at Trinity United Methodist Church and I asked him, would he allow Baptists to come in and preach Baptist doctrine? He said, not Baptist doctrine. They're not bringing that in here. So even the Methodists recognize, which we're saying the Methodists are wrong too. They're not in the Bible either. So that's not the Baptist doctrine? Is that what that called? Can I, is that it? Uh, uh, yeah, not the Baptist doctrine. All right, let's see if we can play that. This is Charles Wickham from Trinity United Methodist on Unet Boulevard in Danville. Then you all worship with the Baptist? Oh, sure. So, oh, sure. So a Baptist preacher could come here and preach oh, yeah. Baptist yeah. doctrine? Not Baptist doctrine. Not Baptist doctrine. Not Baptist doctrine. Not Baptist doctrine. Listen, so let, let me say it again. Let's play it again. Do you all worship with the Baptist? Oh, sure. So, oh, sure. So a Baptist preacher could come here and preach oh, yeah. Baptist yeah. doctrine? Not Baptist doctrine. Not Baptist doctrine. Not Baptist doctrine. Mark, how do, how do you worship with somebody... But you, but they don't. But you won't let them teach their doctrine. And 
What is Second uh, John nine through eleven say? Second John nine through eleven. If anybody comes in, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. So he's saying right there, the Baptists do not have the bo- the doctrine of Christ, and I agree with it. Yeah, but neither do the Methodists. Yeah, exactly right. So why is it that you can't teach doctrine? I mean, why is it that if, if we're all unity, we're all in this together, right? Different faiths, but we're all in it together. Why is it that somebody can't come in and teach a different doctrine? That's right. Well, Paul said to Timothy, and uh, see if I can got this up. As long as we've been having these tent meetings in Danville, I mean, I obeyed the gospel in 2006, and we've had at least two, maybe three tent meetings every year since then. And we've had preachers coming from Texas, Tennessee, Kentucky, everywhere, and they come in and preach the same doctrine. Right, same doctrine. And so here's Paul telling Timothy, uh, I left, you know, when I went to Macedonia, I left you in Ephesus that you, thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. No other doctrine of what? No other doctrine than the gospel that he had been preaching. Amen. So when... Uh, and 1 Corinthians 4.17 uh, also where he says he, he taught the same, same thing, thing in all churches. In every church. Exactly right. For this well, cause I send unto you Timotheus who shall... Uh, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance into rem- of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. So if he tells Timothy, while you're in Ephesus, teach no other doctrine, well, what, what is he going to be teaching? The same thing Paul taught in every okay. church. So, so they were all churches of God. That's right. All the same church. So We can know they weren't Baptist churches. They weren't Methodist churches. They weren't Pentecostal holiness, Jehovah's Witness, Mormon, Presbyterian, Lutheran, so have you. They were churches of Christ. That's right. Romans 16, 16 said. So Baptist faith out of, out of a Baptist preacher's own mouth hinders. If he were to come in and teach it somewhere, it would hinder somebody. Hey, I agree all with right. that. I agree wholeheartedly. You know, I, all I do is beat to God's speed. Now he 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 bids you Godspeed. Yeah. So you're teaching a different doctrine. But I'm teaching the doctrine of Christ because the Bible says if any man teach any other doctrine, don't bid him Godspeed. So he bid me Godspeed. So he must recognize I'm teaching the doctrine of Christ. <laughs> if he even knows that scripture, you think he even know that scripture? Uh, so, but then he says something about as he goes into the house, right? So Mark, Mark, you're asking him, you know, if you're wrong, why don't you help? Why yeah, doesn't he if help I'm you? I'm wrong. Help me. I, I want to see the truth. If I'm wrong, but some people you can't help according to him. Right. Those are the people that don't come to him. Yeah. I mean, he can help the ones that don't come to him. The ones that do come to him, he you can't help those. Yeah. Isn't that something? It's like a doctor going, I, 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 can, I can heal and treat all kinds of people as long as they don't come to me. You know, if they come to my clinic, I can't give them no the help, you know. Sorry. And about this time, you know, his wife was out there reading a the book. And, you know, I didn't mean to interrupt her reading the book. I, you know, I thought her, her husband would be more than willing to discuss the Bible if he's a preacher. But now... She's still out there taking all of this, and he, you know, reaches and takes her by the arm, and they're headed to the door. Then he's, this is his own house, you know. He could have told us to leave. Yeah. But yet he's taking her and going, running inside, and uh, he says something I think about us bothering him uh, okay. as he's going inside. Y'all, y'all. That is a poor excuse for a preacher. It's a bother to have to study the Bible. He bless you. Denying Christ. Says, God bless you. Bid you Godspeed. And I said, um, something about, you know, won't you, won't you help me or something? Nothing. And he said, I would, but y'all go around bothering people or to something to that effect. You're denying Christ. That's before that. Um, it's a bother to have to study the Bible. 
You're denying Christ. All right, so to bother to study to uh, study the Bible. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I have I have trouble comprehend this, Mark. When when a man says you're bothering people with the gospel, and the reason you know? I said you know he's denying Christ. Di didn't Christ say, "He that is ashamed of me and my words, yeah, uh, the same will I be ashamed." Yeah, of? and he also said, "He that." rejecteth me and receiveth not my words. As one that judges That's right. right. The, same, the same word that he rejected. So, friends, this is, this is the point we're making here. This is a, an example of, of a Baptist preacher that is, he, he's not able to answer your questions. So, why do you think that when you're sitting there listening to him on Sunday morning, you know, why do you think that he's actually giving you the Bible? Why would you have confidence that he's telling you what the Bible is actually saying when he won't even give an answer to someone that's coming asking him. Have you tried to ask him a question? You know, Mark, uh, a while back, there's a, I don't know, it's been several years now, but a lady called in, she said, uh, she asked me a question, I said, well, why didn't you ask your preacher this? She said, well, I was ashamed to ask him. Yeah. Well, that ought to tell you something right there. Folks that, that are serious Bible students who love the truth, they know if I'll ask someone in the Church of Christ, a question. They'll give me a Bible answer. Exactly now, you right. might not like it. You may not agree with it. Uh, I had a lady come to the tent last night, and she, was, she said, I learn something every time I go somewhere. She said, now, I, I heard something about instrumental music. She said, have to admit, I never heard that, but he showed it right in the Bible. She said, I'm not sure I totally agree with it yet. You know, she said, but I learned something that I didn't know was in the Bible. There and, you, you know, Mark, that's really... Really, all we want from people is to just have an honest heart to say, "I never heard that before." You know, I've I've seen something that I didn't know was actually in the Bible. There you go. So, Baptist faith, Christian faith, it's bothering him to, uh, it's bothering him to teach the gospel. Look at a hindrance. <clears throat> in Luke four and uh, verse forty-two. This is. Uh, uh, what happened with Jesus and, and uh, when it was day he departed and went into a desert place and the people sought him and came unto him and stayed him that he should not depart from them and the Bible says in verse 43 and he said to them I must uh, preach the kingdom of God to other cities but my point is here's Jesus uh, he's like you know I've got to get away and yet the people still come to him. And oftentimes, Jesus had compassion on them. He healed them. You know, he's trying to go into a, desert, to a, a lonely mountain to pray. Mm -hmm. And they're still chasing him down. And he turned around. He said, You're not, you know, I'm going to heal you or whatever. Uh, he wouldn't let them depart without feeding them. Compassion. And so it wasn't a bother to Jesus. Uh, to answer their question. To, to answer their question and, and, and was, have compassion on the them. The scripture you just read, he was preaching about the kingdom of God. And that's one thing that Micah had a lesson on tonight. A lot of people are confused about the kingdom. Uh, you know, most everybody, James, today is waiting for the kingdom, for Jesus to right. come back and set up his physical kingdom somewhere in Palestine somewhere. And that's false doctrine. Uh, Paul said he had been delivered into the kingdom, Colossians 1.13. And John said he was in the kingdom, Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. And Jesus told Peter... In Matthew 16, 18, and 19, that he was going to build his church and give Peter the keys to the kingdom. And so, also, uh, Mark 9, 1, Jesus said that some of the disciples he was talking to at that time would not die until they had seen the kingdom come with power. So, that's right. Well, kingdom's here, and it is the church of well, Christ. Well, speaking of kingdom, speaking of kingdom, uh, this is, uh, well, let's move on to another preacher. This one that we're going to uh, give you a taste of is Mr. Otis Brown. He's a Jehovah's Witness, I guess, here in, in uh, not here in Danville, Danville. but he's in Danville. <clears throat> and we, <clears throat> we actually met him, I guess, one of the first days uh, that we door knocked together. And listen to the conversation, part of the conversation that, that he and I had. This is Mr. Otis Brown, Jehovah's Witness. Doing. I, I walked up to him. He was in his car. We were on the same street. Picture this, folks. We're on the same street. My daughter and I are walking down one side of the street, and we see this man 
and a woman in there on the other side of the street, kind of going in the same direction. They're ahead of us. And uh, they, they pause and they uh, talk a little bit amongst themselves and they go and they get in their car. And James, this is a day, I believe, that I was on the other end of the room with Will and we were actually having a good Bible discussion. Had our Bibles out and I was showing him, you know, things of the kingdom. And he was writing down scripture and then getting information. Okay, all right. And so I guess when Mr. Brown got through talking to you, he came down and, and he told the young gentleman to come come on. Yeah. He didn't want him talking. We're on opposite ends of, a, of the same street. All right, I dropped Mark off, and then I went to the other end of the street, and we're walk, working back together. And so this is where we meet Mr. Brown, and here's what he says. Good. James O'Field. Hey, James. Otis Brown. Nice to meet you, Otis. Good. Y'all do a little door knocking today? We're doing, yeah, we're talking about the kingdom. Yeah, what's the kingdom? Jehovah's Witness? Yes, sir. All right. I'm talking about the kingdom. Now, Mark, let's stop there. Let's, what, what about the kingdom? I mean, can we just, maybe we need to help our, our audience understand Jehovah's Witness a little bit. When they say we're talking about the kingdom, uh, it's, it's sort of like when they talk about Jesus. They believe in Jesus, but what do they believe about Jesus? Well, they don't believe Jesus is deity or okay. a part of the Godhead. Uh, and as far as the kingdom goes, I don't, myself, I don't really know all they believe about the kingdom. Okay. I know they believe that the 144,000 supposedly are the only ones that are going to go to heaven, the heavenly kingdom. And then they believe something about the, the earth is going to be made into a paradise and that's going to be a kingdom on earth. But it's like Micah said, you know, tonight, if, if their nature's not changed, I mean, Right. You have a paradise on earth in 10 years. It's going to be corrupted again by, right. by man. Right. How long did it take for the world to get corrupt after, uh, after Noah and his family exactly landed right. off the ark? I mean, Noah himself was corrupted. That's I mean, right. you know, getting drunk out here. So <clears throat> here's Mr. Brown. He's talking about, well, we're talking about the kingdom. Well, the Jehovah's Witness don't believe what the Bible teaches about the kingdom either. And uh, just, for example, I actually had a... Uh, uh, excerpt from one of their writings about the kingdom and then I didn't insert it but uh, the Jehovah's Witness believe that the kingdom actually came in 1914 now they believe a whole lot of different things about the kingdom uh, they define their, the term kingdom and it means different things depending on how they use it but just from the fact that they'll say the kingdom came in 1914 listen to what the Bible says about the kingdom and this is what we're saying friends when you're talking to people, you need to understand what they mean so that you can know if they're telling you the truth or not. In Mark 9... And I notice the phone lines are up. I just want to mention that if anyone's willing to call yeah, in... Yeah, open, open the phone lines. Yeah, Mr. Brown could call in if he wanted to. Or Mr. Uh, actually, Mr. Brown, uh, any of them? I actually asked Mr. Brown to call, uh, to call me, and uh, I don't know if he will or not, but in Mark 9, verse 1, uh, Jesus... Jesus speaking, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that there shall be some that stand here which shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God come with power. So well, That's over 2,000 years yeah. ago. So, they, so Jehovah's Witness, Charles Taz Russell or whoever, they missed it by, you know, 1,800 years or 1,900 years. So we know that whatever the Jehovah's Witness believe about the kingdom, whatever they're talking about the kingdom, they're out here in the community talking about the kingdom, it's not right. That's right. You know, what did they tell you? And that's, and, uh, that's one thing people need to realize too, Mark, is uh, you don't have to know a whole lot of truth to be able to answer error. You know, it's like, well, I don't know what the Jehovah's Witness believe about the kingdom, but I know what the Bible says about the kingdom. And if, it does, if they're saying something that doesn't line up with what the Bible says, it's wrong. Amen. You know, so. And Christ came. I mean, if, if the kingdom hadn't come, then wouldn't that make Christ a liar? Because he told that's right. them the kingdom of God is at hand. Right. 2,000 years down the road is at hand. So even, even as the Jehovah's Witness believe that Jesus is not deity, uh, he just, he's a created uh, being, he's an angel, then that's still, that's still as bad. I mean, you're still making him a liar. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is what we're saying, friends. When you listen to people, you can tell something about them. Now, let's go get back to our call here, our, our conversation with, not a call, with uh, Otis Brown. We're members of the Church of Christ. Okay, so what we're going to do so we won't confuse people, 
we'll let you. We, we got other streets we can do, so you all can take. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Now, I found this interesting, Mark. I said. He said, so we won't confuse people. Now that tells you right there, we're not speaking the same thing. Exactly right. <laughs> and he knows we're not speaking the same thing. Now, wouldn't you want, if you're trying to do the Lord's work, wouldn't you want to be on the same page as somebody else? I mean, here, you know, Mark, uh, I, I will, I'll give props to the Jehovah's Witness. I mean, they get out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're the they, only ones I see. They get out. Yeah, besides us. Yeah. And so... Uh, I have respect for them in that regard. Now, the, the thing that bothers me is they get out, but they're teaching false doctrine. That's right. And most people in the religious world uh, recognize, recognize that. That's right. I mean, everybody dogs on the Mormons I mean, and the Jehovah's Witness. Ask us. Y'all yeah. Jehovah's Witness? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. We're just Christians. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's like, but, but just to avoid the confusion, they're going to move on to another, another street. So, Mark, like you said earlier, Mark, uh, 1 Corinthians 14. 33, God uh, 30, is not the author of confusion. So why is it, why is it that we're all teaching something different there? Why, no. why can't we sit down and have a conversation with Mr. Brown? And we see out of their own mouths, Baptists, it's going to cause a hindrance. Jehovah's Witness doctrine, that's, that's going to cause confusion. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, right can't there. Can't you for, get it? Yeah, <laughs> really. So they're going to move on. Now, I wish, Mark, I wish I would have told him when he said, to avoid confusion, we're going to move to another area. I wish I'd have told him, well, we're going to be, we're going to be door knocking all of Danville, so you might as well just leave, you know, leave town, at least for two weeks, because, you know, we're going to be, we're going, this is our, our area for right now. So, uh, but, but I didn't. But the, the fact of the matter is, uh, Mr. Brown is now saying he's going to have a Bible study. So let's. All right, we're well, going to have a Bible study y'all sometime. Okay. Y'all, you right here in, in uh, Danville? Yes. Y'all y'all looking? Yeah. We got a, a Tent meeting going on down here at Calvin's Flea Market. You want to exchange numbers or something? Yeah. I, well, I'll give you I'll give you a flyer. It's got our some content information on it. Okay. What's your person? I like you know. One. My name is James. Okay. Um, Oldfield. Okay. Now, when I call you, my number is a out of town number. It's not a telemarketer. I okay. I'm using the mobile. Okay. Phone well, I actually live in Eden, but mine's going to be a a uh, two seven six number. So. Oh, <laughs> it'll be, it'll, so mine will be a four one three Massachusetts number. Okay. All right. That's me. So All right, James. So, yeah. All right. Are you just gonna call me, or I will? Okay. So, so he he took my number. I, I gave my number, and he call and he calls it. My name is Otis Brown. Okay. And your phone number is I okay. Know. All right. Like I said, we've got uh, our ten minute going down here, going on down here at the Calvin Flea Market on Fifty Eight, like going back toward Martinsville. Okay. And we have a every night. It starts Monday, but every night we have a session where. Uh, okay, it's ringing now. You can get there. I get it. I get it right there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank All you. All right. Uh -huh. Take care now. So I invited him to come to the tent. <clears throat> Brother at, James, when he said that, I hope you're not holding your breath. Oh. Because I talked to Albert Valentine, and he's a member of the same Jehovah Witness Kingdom Hall as Mr. Otis Brown is. Okay. I don't know if he's still down there, but it's been at least probably five years ago. And he said that he was going to give me scriptures that prove that Jesus is not deity. Oh, there are plenty of scriptures. I don't know whether you got that clip or not. I do. Okay. But he says there are because plenty of scriptures. Because of some of the references in the back. Yeah. And it says uh, about oh, yeah. ancestor worship. It mm -hmm. says uh, worship um, God alone to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. But... I'm, I'm taking that you all don't believe that Jesus is God, is a part of the Godhead. We don't believe that, no. We don't believe that, no. We don't believe that, no. Okay, well, actually, right here in uh, Revelation 1 8, it mm -hmm. says, I am Alpha and the Omega. Mm -hmm. says Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. So when they're speaking of Alpha and Omega, mm -hmm. you and I both can see they're speaking of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in Revelation 22, when it speaks of Alpha and Omega, well, uh, if you notice who is talking, call him Christ, right? Uh, he says, I am Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. And see in verse 13, he says, I am Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. But he says, I am Alpha. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying, you know, why is it that, that you all don't recognize Jesus as a part of the Godhead? He's definitely no Godhead. He's what? Now, he's definitely no Godhead. And I got, there's plenty of information on that. He's definitely no Godhead. And I got, there's 
plenty of information on that. He's definitely no Godhead. And I got there's plenty of information on that. Uh, let me just cut down a couple I'll verses it. there. I... Now he's scratching down some verses and he recognized that that was talking about right, Christ. Right. But you know, like I gave the lesson last night, they have eyes to see, see. Just don't don't see. They got ears to hear, but just don't hear. They are refusing to see the truth. And I've went back to try to talk to Mr. Valentine several times, and he has yet to present. He took my contact information, but and he could have called. So that's why I say, James, don't hold your breath on Mr. Brown. Now, well, I won't. Now, also, friend, the the, the meeting with uh, Otis Brown is not not even concluded yet because we run into. I later on the same street ran into his wife, and she said. If Otis Brown said he would call, he'll call because he's my husband. All right, and I don't know if that means she's going to make him call or whatever, so I'm going to hold her to that too. But then later, uh, let's see, Mark, later you, Yeah. this is what, two days later, three days later? Uh, a couple days later, I believe it was, we, uh, hey, how are you, ma'am? We're door knocking, and a uh, sweet lady comes to the door. And you'll hear it in the clip. She introduce ourselves, and and she says, "I got a surprise for you." And just, just hey, get out there. that's all right. My name's Mark, Mark. and this is Jayla. Hi, I'm Jayla. We're with the Church of Christ, and uh -huh. we're having a gospel tent meeting up here, just past Brawlsville School on the right. Uh huh. And we start tonight, uh -huh. and we're going at seven o'clock every night for two weeks. We never ask for any money. We won't pass a plate. We simply want you to come up and. Investigate what we teach and ask questions if you got them. Well, I got a surprise for you. Uh -huh. I got two sitting here visiting already. <laughs> okay. Uh, From Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witness. Well, we would love to have y'all come up to the tent. <laughs> uh, that's actually what, what we're wanting for. Come on in. Come on. Now, Wait. Mark, I just have to say, uh, that, that's a rare treat to find someone that will actually invite you in while they're having a study with Jehovah's Witness. Because yeah. Jehovah's Witness... They have none of it. They, they don't have anything yeah, they, to do with it. You could tell they were ready to, to find the back door if they yeah. could have. And uh, matter of fact, as we the conversation goes on, they uninvite us. I mean, this is not even their house. And, and they say this is not the place or time. You know, y'all right. well, need to be respectful look. and, and you don't basically listen to it? leave. Jane. Thank you. Uh, Y'all can sit down if you like. We'll just have a, a, a religious <laughs> form right here. That'd be great. That's that's you know, uh, oh, yeah. That's the homeowner. Asking us in. Sit down. Let's have a Bible study. Ms. Brown? That's my husband. That's your husband. <laughs> okay. Well, I've tried to talk to Otis several times, and, you know, he's really unwilling to sit down and let's have a, a Bible discussion. What's your name, James? Mark. Mark. Mark McMahon. Now, she, she thought she called Mark James she because she just met me a couple days earlier. That's right. And so, Mark, you owe me a dollar, I think, for oh, that. Okay. Please. Please. This isn't the place for that <laughs> at this time. Please. So, yeah? you're promoting the Bible and this is not the place? I mean, we're visiting this, our friend here. Doesn't it? Well, we are too. So, what, 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 what do they say about my husband? Well, I'm just inviting him up to the tent. What, he what, talked with, was it James, the other day? They're supposed to be talking on the phone. Uh, supposed to be. Yeah. I'm still waiting on him. Hey, here it is. Still waiting. Hello. But doesn't that make you wonder there? I mean, here they are supposedly coming in to talk about the Bible, and we come in invited by the homeowner, and they want to say this is not the place or time for this. You know, we want to have a Bible study. What did y'all come for? Right. <laughs> <laughs> for tea? Uh, <clears throat> you know, Mark, I, and it just goes back to what we've always said about they just don't want to study with anybody that's going to question them or, uh, I, well, yeah, question them, you know. We're saying, look, critique you, their doctrine. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can critique us, you can question what we teach, fine, Amen. you know, because the truth can stand it. That's right. And so the, the Jehovah's Witness, you know, they don't have any, anything to do with it. Now, I'll say this, Mark, we've met Jehovah's Witness before door knocking in, in Eden. Uh, we actually ran into them on the same street as well. That's right. And, and they leave, and friends, I'll tell you, this is what we'll do for you. If you don't want to talk to Jehovah's Witness and they come knocking on your door, if you'll just call me or Mark or any of the other guys, we'll come to your rescue. I mean, I said, matter of fact, I said we ought to get some little stickers put up, put in people's doors, kind of like a security system. 
You know, if you're Jehovah's Witness, we will call, you, you know, the Church of Christ. <laughs> so uh, just, you know, move, move right along. And uh, I think we'll be doing the, the community a great service. But uh, just the idea of them uninviting you or asking you to leave. Uh -huh. But what I'm saying is I've tried to talk to him for years and he's never gotten back to me. Yeah, well, these ladies have been on the move to go to that church and mm -hmm. I just haven't. They, but they keep coming. Right. <laughs> they keep coming. Now, well, she is in the Methodist church. And I appreciate her. And, and friends, we don't normally play audio from door knocking. But when we get a preacher involved or, you know, someone like Jehovah Witness, we're going to play it. And friends, we're not going to go away. We're... We're going to try our best to help these people in the era that they're in because we don't want anyone to go to hell, to spend eternity in hell. And you all recognize, you ought to recognize, mm -hmm. all these different right. doctrines, they're not authorized by God. Right. And all they're doing is dividing the city of Danville. Is, it's already divided enough as it is. And they, they say that we're causing division. Right. And... <clears throat> The division has been there for years, and we're trying to help. Right. We're saying, at least and I don't know what I'd do if they didn't. <laughs> well, and, and Mark, please be accurate in what you're saying. We just moved here a year and a half ago, so don't right. say years. Well, I talked to Valentine before, and uh, he actually said there were scriptures in the Bible that says that Jesus was not deity, and that's what I'm trying to get him to, to show me. You know, I, I think about this, Mark. She said, let's be accurate. They only moved there a year and a half ago. So if you talk to Otis Brown, you know, it couldn't have been more than a year and a half. So give him a break. Yeah. I, would, I would think a year and a half would be plenty of time, you know. And I wasn't, you know, really sure how long it would right. be. But I, I knew that I had talked to Albert, you know. Yeah. It had been four or five well, years. Well, anybody, anybody in the right mind is going to say, okay, so let's limit it to a year and a half, yeah. you know. All right, a year ago, well, you think he'd get back to you. What do you mean by deity? Jesus is God. Jesus is God. The Godhead is made up do, of three. Do we need to listen to this or we want to move on to? Well, it's I mean, pretty much what I questioned yeah. Albert uh, Valentine about. And so, and so friends, this is, again, this is what we're saying. We're trying to do you a service by showing you we, will, we can answer the false doctrine. We can answer the people that keep coming around, knocking on your door, trying to get you to, to join a, a, a cult like the Jehovah's Witness. They won't talk to us. I've had people, I've had Jehovah's Witness come to my house in Eden. Uh, on three occasions, I know on three occasions, I asked them to come back for a Bible study or let's set up a time for a Bible study and they never come back, give them my name, my phone number, they just won't come back because right. they, they don't want to do it. I've had the same thing, James, and, and I actually invite them in and have a Bible study and uh, they'll tell me, well, so-and-so is not with us, but we'll go get him and we'll come back and right. see him again. Right. Uh, but not only the Jehovah Witness, but the Baptists also, they're teaching, you know, and that's one thing I don't want to say. These people are paying, you know, tithes a lot of them because the mm -hmm. preachers are saying that they're supposed to be paying 10% and they're giving, giving them false doctrine. I mean, would you keep paying money to a guy, you know, to a doctor that's not really giving you any medical advice? You know, he's like, here, take a placebo pill or sugar pill and let's move on. I'll bill you. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about one more. We've got just a few minutes here. Uh, here's another uh, individual that, uh, that we're going to use an example of what preachers are like. Are they like Jesus? No, they're not. All right, Otis Brown won't, won't call you back, won't give an answer. Uh, uh, who's the first? Jeff Woods. Jeff Wood. You know, it's a bother, and, and he's not going to talk. Here's another one. Daniel Custer from uh, Riverview Baptist. Now, we're going to have to we'll get this off of, off of the YouTube. All right. Now, this is actually the preacher that the woman said to go see, this, that she said that, uh, she was saved before baptism. Okay. She and, told me to go see Daniel Custer. And here you are. And so you talked to Jeff Wood first. Yep. No. no it was second. But okay. I, I went to see him first. Okay. But he asked the same. Yes. Same question. So as Jeff it's Wood. The same all right. Question. So this is uh we've got this on YouTube here. Hey, is this Mr. Custer? Uh, this is. Hey, How are you? Mr. Custer. I'm doing fine. My name's Mark McMinnis. I'm with the Church of Christ in Danville. I know. I talked to him a few years ago. Hey, buddy, I think it's best we just agree to disagree. I, uh, I, I ain't had nothing to eat all day. I just walked in the door. I'm hungry. I know y'all got different thoughts about something, and no matter what I say, y'all going to twist it and turn it around. I believe what I believe, and y'all believe what y'all believe. Well, actually, all right, now let's stop there because, I mean, 
I know we're kind of taking this piece by piece, but uh, we want to talk about all this. So here he is. You give him a call. I talked to you a couple years ago. And there again, you know, I don't ever remember talking to Mr. Custer. Now, I know Ronnie Andrews, we talked to him, and I don't know how long it's been since he's been gone, but I could be wrong, but I don't know if I've ever met Daniel Custer. Okay. Well, the first thing he said when it comes to the conversation is, let's agree to disagree. Now, agree. now, friends, that is nothing like Jesus. Jesus didn't say, well, let's agree to disagree. In Matthew uh, 22, 29, when Jesus was questioned or when, when he came upon a, a questionable doctrine or something that teaching different, look what he said. Jesus said unto them, you do err uh, not knowing the, uh, the scriptures nor the power of God. So he didn't go, well, you know, you kind of got a little different take on it. So we'll just let it slide on that. No, he said, you're wrong. Right. He just come flat out and said, you're wrong on the scriptures. You don't know them. Now, Mr. Um, Custer. Uh, Mr. Custer, he's, you know, he's like the old general. You know, he's already, he's already getting sued, I guess, you know. Uh, he's getting swamped here. So agree to disagree. Jesus never would have said that. Then he said, Mark, uh, what did he say? He's hungry. Yep. He didn't want to talk to you because he's hungry. Uh, I just couldn't help but think about this when he when he made that statement. He doesn't want to talk to you, answer a Bible question because he is hungry. Now let's look at Jesus in John. And okay. go ahead. Think of Matthew five, but go ahead. Okay. I'm uh, anyway, John four and verse four. Jesus is going through Samaria. Then he cometh to the city uh, of Samaria, and he sits down by the well near the, near the parcel of ground Jacob gave to his son. Uh, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me to drink. So, for his disciples had gone away to the city to buy meat. So we know he's hungry and he's thirsty. And he starts up a Bible, a Bible study with this woman at the well. Mm -hmm. He's not too hungry or too thirsty to talk to her. And actually, the result of it was the whole city, if you keep reading that, the whole city comes out here to Jesus because he started a Bible study when he was hungry and thirsty. Right. And Mr. Custer, no, I, I ain't got time to talk to you, Mark, because I'm, I'm hungry. And he's hunger for the physical food. Right. Well, what does Jesus say in Matthew 5, 6? Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Right. I guarantee you, Mark, if, if he would have shown, uh, I'll say this, I'd say this, you've done this. If he had showed you the Baptist church in the Bible, you'd probably take him down to Reuben's, whatever. I'd have bought him a, <laughs> you know, the biggest meal he's ever That's had right, yet. you know, because if you show us where we're wrong, or you show us something in the Bible that we're teaching wrong, or that, that's going to cause me to go to hell if I keep doing it, man, I owe you more, you I owe you more than, a, than a big ste yeah. steak dinner. So, so here he is, I'm hungry. And just another thing, how he's not like Jesus. In Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, beginning of verse 1, look at this. Jesus, uh, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. Then the tempter came to him. Now, we know what, what happened to Jesus. You know, here he is in, in, uh, being tempted by the devil. Jesus didn't have a Bible study. He had a debate with the devil. With the devil, yeah. You know, after fasting for 40 days. So no doubt about it, you know, eating food was not on his mind when it came to defending the truth. And so, but Mr. Custer, no, he's not like that. He's not like that. As a matter of fact, if he was really concerned about you, why don't he say, you know, Mark, I hadn't eaten anything. Why don't you come down to the restaurant, let me buy you a hamburger or something, and we can talk about the Bible while we eat. I mean, if he's really that hungry. I mean, that's what I'd do, right? I'd have bought him a yeah. yeah, so... Uh, anyway, so he's he's not like Jesus in that way now. Uh, so you ask him the same question. Actually, Mr. Custer, we were door knocking this morning, and we ran across some of your members, and they said that you would be the one to talk to. Uh, the lady was was saying that that oh, you could oh, give no, the no. scripture. Where now, friends, listen closely, please, to the question. 
that I asked Mr. Custer. Now, this proves again that, as just as Jesus said, they have ears to hear, but hear not. Listen to the question, and then listen to how he answers it. Uh, individuals were saved without baptism after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. All right, so after the death, burial, and resurrection. Death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Well, I, I, I'll give you one scripture, and I know you'll have a comeback. When Jesus was on the cross and the thief said, Lord, remember me when you come into thy kingdom. And what did Jesus say? Today thou shalt be me in paradise. Okay, but I said, I said after death, after Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, because you know that was under the old covenant. Jesus' new, Jesus' new will and testament didn't go in effect until after his death, burial, and resurrection. Now, you hear them crickets? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all crickets. So That's all they got, friend. They phone across. They cross. They just, phone across. Just the fact that he goes, well, I'm going to give you an answer, but you already have a comeback. You know what, friends? When you know someone already has a comeback, that should tell you that your answer is is not going to be satisfactory. Right. Because when Jesus, when Jesus answered questions, look at this. In Matthew, uh, and you might have to read this, Mark. In Matthew chapter 22 and verse uh, 41, Matthew 22 and verse 41, looking 41 through 46, asking, uh, the Pharisees were gathered together, asked Jesus, uh, Jesus asked them, what thank ye, of Christ, whose son is he? And look at verse 46. Read verse 46. And no man was able to answer him a word, neither does any man from that day forward ask him any more questions. So if Mr. Custard, Custer was like, uh, if he was like Jesus, he'd have said, I got an answer for you, and it's going to shut you up. Yeah, I couldn't ask him no yeah. questions. Yeah. I mean, it would have just that been the end of it. I got lots more questions. <laughs> But see, friends, this is what we're talking about. When you, when you're looking at the Bible, and you're you're hearing your preacher talk, and someone asks a question, and he goes, "Well, the, I'm going to answer a different question." Mark said, "What about someone who who was saved after the death, burial, resurrection of Christ? You know why he can't answer that? Answer. That's right. He doesn't have an answer for someone who who was uh, saved after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ." Like the thief on the cross. And friends, we've got the phone lines up, and if your preacher can come up with the verse, sorry, we'll offer a thousand dollars for the authority for that verse, where someone after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, where someone was saved before baptism. That's right. Call us up and give us the scripture. Thousand dollars on the line. Now you you could pay your tithes a long time with that. Yeah, you? I told I actually told a lady you know we was talking about a thousand dollars to find the Baptist Church of the Bible. And I said when you're reading the Bible, I said have you ever thought about the fact is it ever does it ever talk about the Baptist Church? She goes, no, I never thought about that. All right, well how about you read it again, read it again and look for the Baptist Church, see if it's in the Bible. Look, buddy, I, I know you probably mean well in your own thinking. I know that. I can tell you this, and this is how I truly speak feel about it. God's word does not need my feeble attempts to back it up. God's word stands for itself. Y'all have a good day. Don't call back. Well, can I can I invite you to come to the tent meeting? Would you consider that, please? <laughs> All right. Have a good day. Don't call back. So again, someone looking for the truth. Don't call Mr. Custer. All right. So friends, when you tell us that your preacher is the the authority. He knows the Bible. This is what we get. Yeah. Don't call back. Don't ask me. Yeah. And and the gospel, God's word doesn't need his feeble he, attempt to back. Right. Let me tell you, he, he hit right on the nail right there. Amen. Feeble attempt. That was a very, very feeble attempt. Amen. And you know, Mark, here's the thing. People say, well, God's word doesn't need me. Well, Paul didn't know that. In Philippians 1, 17, Paul said, I am set for the defense of the gospel. Yes, the gospel needs to be defended. Now, it's not because it's so fragile, but it's because false doctrine comes in and blinds people's minds, creeps into their lives, and, and uh, uh, leads them away. And so, two, three, yeah. So the for the faith. So the gospel needs to be contended for. It needs to be fought for. It needs to be. Uh, you know why they won't contend for the Baptist faith? <laughs> it's not in there. It can't be contended. It, it can't be. <laughs> 
found in the right in the gospel. It, it's contentious, but it's not, but it's not uh, right. something to be contending for. So, friends, we're just trying to help you to see that under the tent or in our in our assemblies when we're teaching Bible Bible class or whatever, we're going to give you the Bible and we're going to help you see the truth, give you answers that you can. Uh, that you can grasp and help save your soul. So, Mark, we're out of time. I see the clock. We're out of time. Uh, so let let me come back to the to our our content information. We want to uh, uh, help you in any way we can. You can call me two seven six three four zero two six five three worthnorthgma dot com. Come out to the tent every night seven o'clock. Uh, Calvin's Flea Market there in Brosville, uh, Virginia, right there at the light by Whispering Pines, uh, New Dollar General. Uh, come on out and visit with us. No collections. We just want you to come out and hear the preaching. And if you have a question, we'll be glad to answer it any way we can. We want to help you very much. So, Mark, thanks for being on with me Thank tonight. You me on. And uh, hope to see you folks at the tent. Always remember to make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. We really do. Come on out. Have a good night.